Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to FM Scout, it is RDF and today's video we have a great underdog tactic for you guys, it was created by Victor Hugo over on FM Scout. He originally tested it with three teams with Liverpool, West Ham and Fulham managing to get top four position with cool three teams. For me, that is very impressive. But what is most impressive is how high West Ham and Fulham both finished. So what I did, I made my own new save, my own test and I tested this out with Fulham myself and we got some very good results. Before we get into the results, if you haven't yet, or if you are new, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and also leave a comment. It helps us a lot and the more you guys can help us, the more we can help others. So now let's get started with the video. And before we do get to the tactic, I want to show you guys a few important things. First of all, I'm going to go to my game status so you guys can see my game status. Now, recently, a few people have been skeptical about the results we have been getting. This is the game status. We don't do anything to our save. So the database size is on small, so the game can go fairly quick, but there are zero changes to the database. And also, as you can see, there are no save and reload, save and reload after every game. This is the game status. I hope it makes you guys happy now that you can see the game status of one of our results. Now, another thing I want to show you guys in a previous video, I spoke about club culture and club DNA. When using a tactic, you have to make sure your players are suited for it in order to achieve success. When it is a plug and play tactic, some people just load the tactic up and just expect certain players or the team to perform exactly how the creator got his team to perform but it doesn't exactly always work like that so we do have a squad view it's kind of a default high press dna squad view in the description i will also provide a link for this squad view but now for the video as you can see with fulham we did finish in third place which is champions league places for fulham in the first season that is incredible we played 38 we won 23 we drew nine only losing six those six losses did come against liverpool away everton leicester sheffield united and Chelsea all away so we lost five games away and then we lost one at home and that was to Manchester City. We also won the Emirates FA Cup beating Manchester United in the final. I mean this season we got our fair share of excellent results as you can see here against Manchester City we beat them in the semi-final 2-0. We beat Manchester United in the final 2-0. We managed to get a 2-2 away draw at Arsenal but also beating Manchester United 4-0 away from home for me was the most impressive and beating Manchester City away 3-1 also. And lastly for the training I did use my own training schedules well there are training schedules I did create for naps tactics but I did use this schedule for this tactic. So with this tactic I use these training schedules I followed the club's DNA of course and also for the individual training I didn't set anything. As you can see all these players do not have anything assigned to them. I don't know if that helps but you can see the training rating at the moment is excellent. But now we are going to finally look at the tactic. And here it is. It is a 4 1 2 2 1 called False 9 Viola. It is a fairly positive tactic. And in goal, we have the sweeper keeper who is asked to pass it shorter. Left back and right back, we have two inverted wing backs. Their instruction is to dribble more, shoot less often, and tackle harder. In centre back we have two ball playing defenders, their instruction is to stay wider and tackle harder. In defensive midfield we have the deep line playmaker, his instruction is to tackle harder. On the flanks we have two defensive wingers, their instruction is to pass it shorter, cross from the byline, shoot less often. In the attacking midfield positions we have two shadow strikers. Their instruction is to shoot less often, tackle harder and mark tighter. And up top, finally, we have the false nine and his instruction is to tackle harder and mark tighter. For the team instructions on the mentality, we have the positive mentality. Attack and width is set to fairly wide. For the approach play, we are playing out of defence and the tempo is set to higher. 
we do have low crosses on and we are working the ball into the box. For the passing directness, it is set to standard and there are no other instructions in possession. When we are in transition, when possession has been lost, we are counter pressing. When the possession has been won, we are going to be making our counter movements. When the goalkeeper is in possession, he will be slowing the pace down and distributing it to the flanks by throwing it long. Finally, out of possession, for the defensive shape, we are using the offside trap with a much higher line of engagement. The standard defence line with a standard defensive width and extremely urgent pressing intensity with to prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Now, those are the team instructions. I think there is also a set piece routine. So as we can see, this is the defensive set piece routine for the right and left hand side. For the attacking routine, for the right hand side, this is what it looks like. And for the left hand side, this is what it looks like. Also, for the free kicks, when it is direct, this is what it looks like on the right hand side. And this is what it looks like on the left hand side. When we are attacking direct free kicks, this is what it looks like on the left hand side. And this is what it looks like on the right hand side. When it is a direct free kick on attack, this is what it looks like. For the indirect wide and indirect deep. For the throw-ins when we are defending, I'm guessing this looks like a default setup. I am not too sure, but this is what it looks like. And for the attacking throw-in set piece routine, this is what it looks like on the right hand side. And this is what it looks like on the left hand side. Now that is the tactic completed, let's look at some of the statistics. The attacking efficiency, when it comes to the attacking efficiency in the Premier League, you can see that Fulham were aggressive and clinical. A little bit on the wasteful side, but we are Fulham. We do not have the high quality finishers such as the Manchester United and the Manchester City. Also, if we look at our goals and how we are scoring them, 46 are from play shots, 11 are from powerful shots and 11 are from headers. Looking at the assist, most of our assist comes from through balls, but we also score a few from corners and a few from crosses. When it comes to conceding our defensive efficiency, we are quiet and impenetrable. Now looking at some more detailed team statistics for the average possession, we were 5th with 53%. We scored the 3rd most goals in the league and with the 3rd most expected goals for in the league. For the corners, we scored the joint most corners. We joined top with Manchester United scoring 10 from corners and creating 23 clear-cut opportunities. We did have the 6th best conversion rate whilst having the 2nd most dribbles made and 2nd most dribbles per game. Defensively, we didn't do too bad. We had the third best defence in the league and we kept 16 clean sheets, which is the fourth most in the Premier League. When it comes to goals, you can see that Mitrovic scored 17 and Ruben Lotfus cheek also scored 14. That is very good for the attacking midfielder, Ruben Lotfus cheek He managed to score 19 in all competitions. And for the assist, we have Harrison Reed, who had 14 assists throughout the whole season. Tom Kearney also made the list with 9 assists. Now, looking at the squad stats, you can see that Mitrovic and Ruben Lotfus cheek both scored 19 goals. Adamola Lukman scored 13, while Josh Anoma managed to score 11. For the assist, Harrison Reed managed to get 15 assists in all competitions, while Tom Kearney managed to get 11 assists in all competitions. Mitrovic managed to get 7 and Ruben Lotfus cheek managed to get 8. So, for the key positions, you can see that Harrison Reed, who played on the right-hand side, so the defensive winger on the right-hand side was key for me. The two attacking midfielders, the two shadow strikers, and, of course, your defenders, your centre-backs especially, will be very important. You can see that Tolson here, he's very speedy and he's also decent in the air with decent passing so he can be kind of a model defender for you guys to search for. But that is it for this tactic and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It has been RDF, don't forget if you are new or you haven't yet make sure you subscribe, make sure you leave a comment and like this video. It's been a pleasure speaking to you guys, I will see you soon. Peace out.